So this is the track right here. This is the place where I used to train at every day. Uh, what's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Tunji's podcast. I'm your host, Tunji Taylor Lewis. And as you can see, I'm not at my house right now. Uh, right now, I'm not even in the city in my house. I am in Coquitlam, BC. Uh, and the reason why I am outdoors is that I just finished fi uh, visiting my old track friends um, uh, over here at uh, Percy Perry Stadium uh, in Coquitlam. Uh, it was very, very fun catching up with them. The reason why I was over here was because uh, a couple friends of mine who I grew up with in my teenage years uh, doing track with today was their uh, last and final practice ever uh, doing track. And uh, one of my friends said, hey, like, come out and stuff. And I was like, ah, no, man, I can't make it because I got work. And he was just like, but this is our last practice. And then sort of like figured out a way to make it work, figured out the hours and stuff like that. So I'm here uh, and I'm very, very glad I came. Um, uh, this place, uh, this area just holds uh, so many memories for me. Um, actually, yo, let me let me walk over to the track as I'm talking right now. Uh, so basically, um, before um, I knew that you know acting and comedy was my passion, I knew that uh, track and field was a passion of mine. Um, I love the track. Um, I didn't particularly like working out or like all the hard uh, training that we had to do, but I'm so grateful for the experience of uh, doing it for like you know for like four years in high school and two years into university because it gave me so many, um, it just gave me so many principles that I use today um, while I'm acting and doing comedy. Um, just the principle of discipline, um, going to work every day, training, putting your best foot forward, persevering through pain, um, all that good stuff that, you know, is set in like, you know, motivational, oh man, my face is hella dark in that light. Sorry about that, y'all. But, um, all that good stuff that you learn in, um, in motivational, you know, speeches and Instagram clips and all that good stuff, I learned right here on the track. And uh, <coughs> our coach, uh, Tara, shout out to Tara Self, uh, she would not take it easy on us um, at all. Um, one of the hardest workouts that we would have to do would be sprinting full speed, 250 meters. Like, and we have to do some like four of those with like two minutes rest or something crazy like that. And uh, man, when I tell you that it was exhausting, man, I can't, just thinking back on how exhausted I was during those times. So this is the track right here. This is the place where I used to train at every day. Um, it didn't always look like this though. It used to be um, all red all red and that they did some renovations on it which took a while but now it's looking all beautiful here's all the beautiful people on the track yeah man this is what i used to train my special my specialty used to be the 100 meters um even the 200 meters was too much for me man like i was not a person who liked to run for that long i was a power sprinter i went for very short periods of time i had my strength was like my power and my burst at the blocks for those of you who don't know what the blocks is, that's when, that's the very, very start of the, um, that's the very start of the race. Um, you know, that little contraption that people, that track athletes have at the start line. Um, that's what we use to give ourselves the leverage, to give ourselves the best start possible. Um, that's the part that I was best at, um, was my burst, was my power, my natural strength, was what gave me the speed. And um, the reason why I had to stop doing track or like sort of the beginning of the end for me for track was I got hit with a knee injury. Uh, basically my knees were like under too much pressure from all of the, um, from all the stuff I was doing athletically, you know, I'd practice. Then I'd go to my backyard and play basketball. And I got this thing in my knee called uh, patellar tendonitis. And um, it's, uh, the, the nickname for that is jumper's knee. So basically I was like, you know, jumping too much and doing too much, you know, uh, doing too much stuff, putting too much pressures on my knee. And um, that was sort of my first punch in the stomach as far as life goes. Like 
everybody you know has moments when uh, you know life doesn't go the way they want it to you know at that point I thought I was gonna you know go to the Olympics at 18 years old and you know uh, I'm a really ambitious guy I've been an ambitious guy from the beginning so I thought I was you know gonna break world records you know beat Usain Bolt you know get gold medals all that good stuff and then I got hit with a knee injury and after I got hit with that injury I did track for five years after that into my second year of university but I was just never the same oh so for context I was really good I was really really good at track just because of my natural talent um, I was the kid who hit puberty early so like man when I was hmm, when did I join track I joined track when I was about 12 years old and when I was 12 13 like I had the body of like a you know 15 16 year old because I just hit puberty so early so I was just I was just really really good like one of the top sprinters of, in the nation in Canada at that time not the US US y'all are crazy out there but in Canada I was I was one of the really good ones got hit with a knee injury tried to come back for five years you know um, really tried to persevere through, persevere through the doubt and uh, and all that good stuff but part of the reason why um, it took a while for me to like get back into it is because while I was down with my knee injury um, I discovered theater and I discovered my love for theater and I discovered my you know love for performing um, you know taking drama classes in high school um, you know I should have been you know doing more rehab and I should have been doing more stuff to get my knee better but I was just so involved with you know our theater productions and uh, um, and uh, trying to get right for the show that I didn't, I probably didn't spend as much time getting my knee right as I should have. And I also was probably in a time in my life where I kind of just assumed that it would get better. And like whenever I got back into it, that um, that I'd be like right back where I started and I'd be back to beating everybody and all that stuff. And that definitely wasn't the case. Like once I was finally able to compete again, I was in for like a rude awakening. Like some of my good friends, um, from from the track now who are like you know top you know sprinters in the nation right now I used to beat their ass I get back to track after my injury and they started to beat my ass and I was like what and it was just like so discouraging um, uh, you know I definitely took a lot of pride a lot of my identity was wrapped up in um, a lot of my identity was wrapped up in how good I was as an athlete and the fact that I was able to beat everybody and be faster than everybody it gave me a sense of pride it gave me a sense of you know you know it gave me a huge sense of like just belief in myself and you know belief in and how good I was um, and then you know after track didn't work out I kind of transferred that energy onto you know improv and theater and acting I kind of made that you know I kind of made it my source for for feeling you know feeling a good sense of self-esteem feeling a good sense of of self-worth um, and you know after going through that with track you know having disappointing times year after year after year no matter how hard I tried I was never getting any faster and uh, the fact that in theater you and in improv you're always gonna have bad shows it really taught me an important thing in life is just like you cannot um, I, I just learned that you cannot have your self-esteem wrapped up in what other people think of you. You can't have your self-esteem wrapped up in how people perceive you. Because that was the whole thing, like when I was on the track and I was faster than everybody, everybody perceived me as this beast, as this, you know, super fast kid. When I was on the theater having good shows, you know, everybody saw me as this really funny guy, as this super talented, oh my goodness, like it's an honor to meet you. But when those things weren't happening, I would get really down on myself. I'd start thinking, you know, like, uh, you know, like, like, you know, if, if I'm not good at this, then like, then like, the, what the what am I good for, basically? Um, and that's when, you know, that's when I started taking my relationship with God more seriously. Um, just started uh, realizing the things that are really important in life. Just, just not attaching my uh, self-esteem or my self-worth to. Uh, the things that I accomplished and I think once I started doing that man life got a lot better but I'm always going to be grateful for my years doing track because it just gives me such an advantage 
um, I feel like over my peers when it comes to doing this acting and comedy thing because at the end of the day I'm used to working extremely hard to get results and I've also been the experience of working extremely hard and getting no results so as far as I, I like for me it's just like it's nothing to lose like I'm used to working hard I know it could go bad or good so might as well just go for it that's sort of my mindset about this thing and uh, it's been working out pretty well so far because you guys are really supporting the podcast, which I love and appreciate. So, uh, yeah, man, that's my history in athletics. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Peace out.